हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज मोहम्मद काथावाला विद माय को होस्ट आदित्य एंड ऐश्वर्या वेलकम टू द मोबाइल यूएक्स पॉडकास्ट वेयर वी कवर इंटरेस्टिंग वेब टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड कम्युनिटीज इन दिस एपिसोड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर डिस्कशन अराउंड नेविगेशन आई वांटेड टू गेट इनटू द निटीग्रिटीज ऑफ व्हाट जावास्क्रिप्ट राउटर्स आर व्हाई दे आर इंपॉर्टेंट टू आवर एप्लीकेशन वेब एप्लीकेशंस एंड आल्सो जस्ट टेक अ क्विक डाइव इनटू द व्यू जेएस लाइब्रेरी राउटर दैट वी कैन यूज आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स राइट um so to understand why we need routers uh, i'm just going to quickly give a a preface of preface of what uh pwa and spas are that use these routers hmm. so pwas as we've mentioned before were created to kind of give higher quality experiences on the web and pr- as progressive web app kind of entails in the name uh kind of gives more app like experiences that means uh the web these websites are no longer dependent on servers to create pages instead they can right. do a lot of this rendering and generation of pages on the client side mm-hmm. which leads to lower page load times obviously because you're just rendering and then you also have smoother animations and stuff so what happens in single page application is uh, we need router for uh, interacting with the urls um uh, if our single page application is just based on single url and uh, java functions are doing and fetching logics and views for it then uh, it's hard to manage anything with urls like we can't save it we can't uh, share the urls or reload the page to get the exact view so here comes the role of router in uh, our web applications and uh, using this router we maps the urls with the content of the application and uh, if we have this mapping then we can uh, interact and sh- can share the url or save a page and the browser will uh, uh, show the that exact view which is based on the routers so basically i think we need router to uh, interact with the browser history yes. api yes because in single page application since you don't have uh, you don't fetch pages from server through url yes. uh your browser won't know yeah. all of your urls of the website right. mm-hmm. so basically to leverage the browser history api we use routers in spas right right whenever you uh, you define a certain routes in your router and when you hit a certain url uh, of that routes in the address bar of the browser then what router does is it pushes that uh, URL into the browser's history API, mm-hmm. so that uh, so that that particular URL is now enabled on the address bar. Okay. And once once that URL is uh, activated, uh, then r- what router does is uh, it uh, loads the component which is actu- actually linked with that route. Okay. So how does the router know what components are linked to what URLs? So that's basically the configuration which we set up uh, in our router. Okay. So you basically set up uh, which routes will go to which components okay. in your code. So if you tell it beforehand, yeah. you kind of set up a kind of table of contents. Yes. Yeah, we create a map for this. It's MVC model view controller. We just map the views with the models. Yeah. So router is oh. nothing but mapping between your components and which routes will take you to that component. Okay. Right. Um so you mentioned uh, very critically I think that if you have you, you can put in if you have um routes set up in your router you can use those and directly enter those into your URL bar and the router mm-hmm. will take you directly to those routes. Yes. Um so I'm just thinking in scenarios where like in e-commerce we have order histories. So mm-hmm. you go to like your orders and then you open up an order. Mm-hmm. So that order right there is not a predefined route because there's no way you could create like routes for all of these orders. So at that point if I were to copy a URL if I've like gone to one of my orders from my history and I copy the URL and I send it to a friend to like reference or I open it somewhere else mm-hmm. so assuming I have permissions to view it what would the router do how would it react in that scenario So uh, since you ha- we haven't mapped that whole mm-hmm. URL in the router yeah it will be, uh, it will it won't give you that page in in i think it's uh, in such kind of scenarios you actually need to uh configure those fallback urls on your mm, server right. sites okay because uh, if you directly hit anything on the browser definitely it will go to server first and on server you need to configure those urls uh because in server uh, generally what happens is uh, in spa when you hit a, uh, a hit a url of your website then server what server does is it just uh gives you whole 
bundle of your website and it loads the index.html on your browser. Okay. Now, if you randomly uh, hit any of the URL uh, on uh, on the browser, then it will go to server and on your server, you, ne- you actually need to configure that uh, fallback URL so that uh, it uh, it generates that page on the server side and loads that page directly on your browser. So is this like a pitfall that we wouldn't face if we were using like a traditional website? Is this something that we wouldn't have to deal with? Yeah, basically in traditional website, what we do is uh, on the ser- everything is configured on server side, right? Right. You what you hit is uh, what you hit on uh, on the ad- address bar. It is it is linked on the server side which page you want to render for that link. Okay. So that's uh, in in the same way when you in SPA when you don't have specific routes defined for the URL which you have hit, then you actually need to do a fallback URL on your on your server side. Mm. Basically, whenever we use a router, we have such scenario uh, when we need to interact with servers. And for all those scenarios, we already have mappings for those URLs in server. And we can enhance the fallback URL for the client side's uh, routings. Mm. Mm. So is there like, um, how many different ways can we deal with these routes that we don't have indexed in our router? Like, is there like uh, only you can only create like one 404 page basically, or is there ways to like handle different ones? Because in e commerce pages, I don't know how we're dealing with this right now, which is for products that you can't possibly index all of your products mm-hmm. in a router. So, how do we like can you do spe- specialized handlings for those different URLs? Yeah, for basic uh, specifically for product, we have. Uh, a uh, fallback URL set up on on a, on the server side, like it based based upon the SKU on the URL, it fetches the data of the product and it then renders that product page. Okay, so you could in theory do something similar for like orders too. Where if you get like an order in your URL, <coughs> yeah, you could set up something that yes uh, loads that out. Yes. Okay, so it's basically how many different cases you want to handle. Yeah, how many yeah. different categories you want to have. Okay, uh, that kind of covers our briefing on what routers are in javascript and what their roles are within our website um but the good thing is we don't have to make these ourselves when, whenever we go out to make a javascript website mm. uh, there's mm. great libraries out there i think angular react and Vue are some of the big ones mm. they all come with their own router uh, and so today since we've been using Vue router more recently uh i think we can kind of give a quick tutorial or give a, not tutorial but like a quick overview of the various ways that we can use that router to kind of enhance our website's navigation. So uh, there's three um, main ways I think we should look at the way we can navigate people. There's uh, You can navigate them programmatically. You can use nested navigation or routing. And there's also uh, ways to create dynamic routes mm-hmm. or switch dynamic routes dynamically more properly. Programmatic navigation is... Uh the one in which you logically uh, navigate your user mm. through JavaScript code. Okay. Right. Instead of users uh, directly clicking on link and going through the navigation, so uh, uh, we can we can say it is a conditional or conditional type of navigation mm-hmm. where you mm-hmm. check some conditions and you decide where to navigate the user. Okay. So, so there are actually three ways you mm-hmm. uh, in which you can do the programmatic navigation of user. Like first is the most common, which is a router dot push, push method. So router dot push method uh, is not uh, generally works uh, the same uh, like the history API. Mm. Like uh, it works same when the user clicks on a link or you do the push. Right. Mm-hmm. So what it does is when you uh, it navigates the user to the specified route. Mm-hmm. And it actually stacks that route to the browser history API. Okay, so it doesn't like mess with the history in any way. It yeah. just adds one more step. Yes, yes. Okay. That's a, that's push, and it is generally most used uh, method. It's the most traditional kind most of most traditional kind of method to yeah. to be used. Uh, another one is the router dot replace. Mm-hmm. So this uh, works basically same as a router dot push, but the only difference is uh, it uh, replaces the last. Uh, a uh, stack of the history API with the cur- with the uh, route New. which you are specifying. Mm. So it will replace the last uh, s- uh, route from the history API, and 
So mm -hmm. it kind of takes the last place you were at and just changes it? Yeah, basically. So it like kind of wipes that out of the history? Uh, not the whole history, but the current... That uh, one page that you were at. Current top stack of the history. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that last component that you were at. Yes. Where you started the next step from. Um, so when would you want to use replace instead of push? I can't, like... Is there any reason like you wouldn't want the user to like access their own history? Like I feel like that's kind of confusing from a navigation standpoint, right? Yeah, uh, maybe uh, in while logging in, uh, yeah. in a homepage, user just logs, uh, clicks the login button, and uh, you shows a login page to the user. And if he successfully logs in, you want to show him the profile page. Mm -hmm. But if he w uh, wants to go back, you don't want uh, him to go back right. to the login page, right. and you want to uh, you want him to navigate to homepage. Right. Uh, in similar scenario. Which step in that whole process are uh, you replacing? When he is moving from login to user. Okay. Okay. So, so when so he, he yeah, was I in think the login he, page. Enters the credit his credential and clicks on login, mm -hmm. and you check uh, whether the credentials right. are uh, correct. Mm. And if it is, you navigate the user to profile page through replace. So this will replace the login, the login. stack mm. from the history API and okay. uh, with the profile page. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that would that would be weird if you logged in then you hit back and you just went back to the login page. Right. Mm. I think that is a good example. Yeah. It makes sense. And then, so then, what is what are people using Go for? When are you, when are you jumping around history like that? Time travel. Uh, yeah, Go is nothing but you can travel through the history uh, with the number of steps which you have specified there. Mm -hmm. So if you specify uh, router dot go and you specify minus one, then it will take you back to the history one step back mm -hmm. <coughs> through browser history. So that's basically go. You can specify the position in the router stack which you want to go to. Okay. Uh, after that, what do we have? Um, after that, we have uh, another type of navigation in view router that's uh, nested routing. Mm -hmm. And in nested, we actually create uh, we can create uh, childrens of uh, any route. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, if we have a user, then inside that user route, we can create childrens like uh, my prof uh, means. Uh, we can create children like uh, my history, uh, orders, some uh, settings. These can be uh, the route which can define un un under another route, and uh, uh, we can't just go back to uh, the mm. children, and mm. we need to navigate it to uh, from the parents. So it's the navigation router. So do you think kind of like um, if you're uh, I don't know if you guys uh, are YouTube fanatics like this, but um, on YouTube when you go to a channel page. Mm -hmm. you have multiple tabs on the channel so you have like the videos the uploads and like the playlist so when i move to that playlist is that like technically a child route at that point child nested navigation uh i'm not sure I've, i haven't seen its url but uh, if the U uh, url is like uh, youtube slash the uh, mm -hmm. channel name and then about and then playlists and videos then it's like the mm -hmm. uh, nested route okay so then you could use that if you wanted to like arriving at a certain component within that you want to save some changes right. and use that in your URL make that mm -hmm. like copy paste shareable yes you would use nested navigation yes correct okay so after after nested routing we have dynamic routing mm -hmm. where we where we can uh, simply specify the dynamic params in the in your routes like suppose you have a user routes which shows the profile of the user then you can specify the uh, dynamic params in that route like user id with the colon so if you specify colon user id in that route then mm -hmm. it will consider that that part as dynamic mm -hmm. and uh, depending on what id you have sent in that route it will show the data of that user mm -hmm. so it is uh, the same component same route but uh, it is dynamic for every user uh, for every parameter for every par parameters yeah so one of the advantage or thing to be noted here uh, in the dynamic route is it does not uh, create the component each time when the user navigates from one route to mm -hmm. another like another route like when the user navigates from user 1 to user 2 mm -hmm. then it will use the same component and just update the data in it mm -hmm. uh, instead of uh, destroying and creating the new component for it uh, because essentially because the user page is the same it doesn't really yes. change so this will this is actually uh, effi more efficient mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, the different thing here is it will not since it is not recreating that component the all the lifecycle hooks of view component mm. 
won't uh, get called right. here. So mm. that is one thing which we need to handle yes. when using the dynamic routes. Mm. So what do you mean lifecycle hooks won't be called? What does that mean? So like uh, whenever whenever a component is created and loaded, there are certain lifecycle hooks of you which gets called, and in those uh, in those particular time you can do some of your uh, code logics. Okay, like so there is like a mounted hook, there is a created hook. So created hook is basically when the component is created, and mounted hook is basically when the mount component is mounted on the DOM. Yes. Okay. Right. So those are the base uh, certain time intervals mm -hmm. when or functions which we have in which you we c you can do certain uh, coding. Okay. I think I've logic. seen something similar like that. In Ionic, I think they're called uh, lifecycle events. They call them there. Here they call them hooks, mm -hmm. and you yeah. can listen to for them. Yes. And so yes. Like right. When yes. the page Correct. loads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I see. That's interesting. Um, so I bet, you know what, in Capybara, I think we're using, uh, I bet they're using um, dynamic routing when you go from product page to product page. Right. Yes. Because yes. they're not, um, they, there's no point in reloading all the components. You just need to change out the data right. between them. Mm. Yeah. So um, there's this really annoying thing. I don't know. Um, it's probably doesn't, it's probably related to dynamic routing where sometimes um, image size gets messed up within uh, the glide yes, JS sir. thing. Uh, so what happens in uh, that scenario is uh, uh, if we opens a page, uh, newly new page, uh, which has like say four images mm -hmm. uh, for that product. Mm. Uh, so what happens is the dome is created uh, for the four Im images uh for in the carousal mm -hmm. uh, and now when uh, uh, we dynamically navigate it to another product page mm -hmm. uh, and now this product page has uh, let's say 10 images uh, so the doom which is created for uh, in for the gallery uh, was created for four images and now okay. the number of images have changed mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is a little annoying thing there uh, which we want to fix and uh, do you mean that uh, when we load in images into the carousel, mm -hmm. it's creating this um, flex box basically where mm -hmm. all the images right. are lined up horizontally? Mm -hmm. um, so if you have four images, it creates something that's uh, four images wide with the right. dimensions that we give it. But since we're using dynamic routing and mm -hmm. that component isn't be being reloaded, if we go to a, um, a product that has maybe like seven images, mm -hmm. it's now trying to fit seven images into a space that's created for four full size exactly. images. Right. So yes. all of them shrink to fit mm -hmm. into that. And mm -hmm. then if we go to something that has two images, they all grow to fit into the four thing. Right. Right. You know what? Um, I think <clears throat> maybe we could fix this by changing the grow and shrink properties of Glide.js, but Glide.js has proven to be a pain to edit and customize. Uh, yeah, on, uh, for Capybara, uh, the Glide.js is not a direct dependency. Uh, the Glide.js is a dependency of SFUI, mm -hmm. uh, which we use in uh, Capybara. So we cannot uh, directly play with uh, Glide.js functionalities. Mm. So uh, here we can use the before route update navigation guard to mm -hmm. fix this issue. Mm. issue. Since the uh, lifecycle hooks are not getting called in these dynamic routing. Right. So can we use that to like target specific components within our big component and yes. like reload this individually even if we don't want to reload the whole component yes. over again? Yes, it can be done at the component level. So at that point we would mm. tell Glide.js, hey, reload every time we dynamically change right. the route. Right. Seems like a pretty easy thing to do or is it easier said than done? Uh, let's see. We, uh, we should we'll try. have to look at it mm. we have to look a at bit, it. but yeah, this can be a solution, good mm. solution. Nice. Yeah, um, I'm just going to quickly run through a quick demo here. So right here we have, uh, oh, it's already broken. How sweet. How is that even possible? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's basically the issue right there. Um, in a space of about three images, we're trying to fit five images. And so now they're all smaller to fit within that. So we would hear um, re... Uh, reload this component, which mm. would then resize to fit five images. Wonderful. Um, apart from that, is there anything we're missing out for um, how to use routing? Uh, we've been at this for a while now, um, talking about routes for <laughs> very long. I think we have covered uh, most of enough. it. Enough. Yeah. But yeah, still there are there are a lot of things in routing which which needs to be covered but yeah uh, for now for this episode i think we are good. routing is definitely like one of the great inventions of javascript yeah. because 
it just uh, the possibilities it opens up for navigating and like this is just the, we we cover most of the functionalities that come with uh, out of the box libraries. If you want to go crazy with it, like I know Ionic goes crazy with its <laughs> routing and like its bottom navigation, which we'll probably cover at some point. Mm. It just goes all in. So maybe we'll come back to this sometime soon. I think we're going to take a ba break from routing though, at least a few episodes. <laughs> Uh, and we'll see you guys t soon in the next episode, I guess. Bye-bye. <laughs>